Camel suggested what I should uh, I should uh, say, but normally I don't follow whatever suggestion <laughs> <laughs> people make of what I should say. Yeah? So uh, I, I will I will just uh, partially uh, follow him, but uh, <coughs> we'll uh, start I suppose by giving some background of the pre uh, pre war situation. You know. Because I think that gives you uh, an idea of what really uh, happened af afterwards. Now, as you know, <coughs> uh, or maybe most of you do not know, uh, before the war, there were a number of Malay associations, Persatuan Melayu, Persatuan Melayu Selangor, Persatuan Melayu Johor, and all that. But uh, they were not political in the true sense of the word. Although they were concerned about Malay issues in political, social, and economic uh, arenas, but they don't express uh, <coughs> whatever they desire uh, according to political uh, uh, motives. And uh, in fact, these movements had very little to do with uh, with the <coughs> nationalist movement in the true sense of the word. Now. Uh, among the Malays, the first uh, form of political movement or party was the Kesatuan Melayu Muda. It's a uh, uh, Malay Youth Association. Now, um, <coughs> this Malay Youth Association, of course, uh, was formed much later than uh, the Communist Party of Malaya. The Communist Party of Malaya, of, of course, was the first a uh, truly uh, political organization and uh, uh, among the Malays, <coughs> the Satuan Melayu Muda, KMM, was the first. And this Satuan Melayu Muda had uh, a number of interesting characteristics. One, of course, <coughs> the leadership was very much uh, school teachers, and uh, the Malay middle class then, which was very small. Now, among the leaders, of course, the most famous was Ibrahim Yaakob. And in the committee of KMM, there were already people like Bustamam, Ahmad Bustamam, who later played an important role uh, in, uh, in uh, the post-war movement. Now, uh, after KMM, in fact, KMM was was, was disbanded uh, during the Japanese occupation. In fact, the, the Japanese themselves disbanded KMM because uh, they were unhappy. Although the group, some leaders in the group, cooperated with the Japanese against British uh, colonialism, <coughs> yet uh, they were unhappy because the KMM showed too strong a nationalist streak, which the Japanese did not like at the time. And in fact, they helped to, uh, to uh, disband the KMM. Uh, after the KMM, there was this uh, KMM, uh, uh, no, PKMM, P PKMM, Parti Kesatuan Melayu Melaya the Malay Nationalist Party of Malaya. Now, in that leadership of PKMM, I hope you can remember this, eh? PKMM is Parti Kebangsaan Melayu Malaya, Malay uh, <coughs> MNP, Malay Nationalist Party. Now, in the leadership, of course, you had leaders of KMM becoming leaders of PKMM. Now, PKMM was actually uh, <coughs> the first leader was uh, uh, a rather unknown person actually, although his name is known, Kamudin Lasso, you know, just remember Lasso, right? Lasso, Lasso. Uh, <coughs> he disappeared after a short while, and he was he was succeeded by Dr. Burhanuddin. Dr. Burhanuddin was associated, of course, with the KMM earlier. Later, uh, well. In uh, PKMM, 
besides with Dr. Burhardin, there was also uh, <coughs> uh, Ishaq Haji Muhammad, Pak Sako, Ishaq Haji Muhammad, and Ahmad Bustamam. There was another figure, of course, somebody, uh, uh, no, what's his, what is his name? I forget now, I'll, 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 it will come back. Now, uh, we, these were the three people, the men, you know, who were important, played an important role at that time, but they were also women, quite a good number of women, and uh, one of them was, of course, uh, Shamsia Fake. Now, K PKMM, Parti Kebangsaan Melayu Melayu, the Belay Nationalist Party, had two wings. One wing was uh, <coughs> API, Angkatan Pemuda Insaf, eh? the conscious uh, youth, and uh, the women's wing, led by Shamsi Afake, who later joined the Communists, uh, <coughs> was Awas, Angkatan Wanita Sedar, the conscious of the women. Eh? Now, uh, Api, I don't know whether I should go to all these details, if you have any, but good for some of you to know, of course. Api uh, <coughs> was quite militant. Uh, Bustamam, who was the leader, believed that independence should be achieved through blood, through bloodshed. Kemerdekaan dengan darah. Kemerdekaan dengan darah. He uh, wrote what was called a, <coughs> a testament, eh? a testament politic political testament which was banned by the British and he was arrested and uh, he was convicted uh, either paid a thousand five hundred ringgit dollars then you know as a fine or one 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 uh, years jail well he chose to be fined and of course some of his friends who were more militant than him thought that he shouldn't have paid the, the, the fine, but instead go go uh, go and be jailed, you know. Uh, but whatever it is, whatever it is, apparently, uh, <coughs> after that, Api apparently, uh, uh, was almost uh, uh, crippled, you know. The women's wing was quite apparently, quite active, and uh, together they made the MNP, of course, the MNP, the main body, and then under under them, the two wings. Apani, uh, Api and uh, Api and uh, Awas. Eh? <coughs> now, uh, during the emergency, during the emergency, there were a lot of people who were detained. You know, uh, the British took action against the left wing movement. Took action against uh, uh, the trade unions, especially trade unions and later the political parties they detained thousands of, you know, of, uh, <coughs> of people who were, who, were, who were active and they also uh, <coughs> resettled not only Chinese quarter areas but Malay Kampung areas which were the basis the base for the political movement you know Jeram for instance in, in, in Selangor you know, was a whole Malay Kampung People do not know about this, you know, but Hobley Kampung was resettled like the Chinese uh, squatters were resettled. And they were <coughs> also in, in separate, of course, uh, confinement, uh, surrounded by fences and all that. Now, uh, what is important is, is that uh, during that time also uh, they were thousands of uh, uh, people who were detained some estimates said Malays alone among Malays alone there was something like 10,000 detain uh, uh, detainees 10,000 detainees and of course Chinese quite a big number too quite a number, big, big number but a lot of the Chinese <coughs> and, uh, activists or left wing activists then were not very much in the open they were very much underground you know and uh, in fact, during that time, uh, the movement that was in the forefront was very much a Malay movement. Now, with the with the emergency also, <coughs> uh, and the banning of left wing movements who were operating then, although there was no official banning of 
PKMM, yet uh, there was almost uh, like, if in effect, there was a ban because they removed almost the total leadership and large number of the membership. So what was left was only the skeleton. There was a vacuum, <coughs> vacuum at that time, political vacuum uh, before the war. You know, uh, the left-wing Malays and Chinese and Indians in political parties and in unions were crippled, were removed through detention. And this vacuum was occupied by another Malay group which was encouraged by uh, <coughs> the British. Now, this was Amnu. This was Amnu. Uh, some of the leaders of the Prasatuan Melayu before the war, who were government servants, became leaders of Amnu. Now, Amnu was encouraged by the British. This way, government servants were allowed you know, to, uh, to become active in politics. Tun Razak, for instance, you know, he was secretary, uh, state secretary in Pahang, and he was allowed to become an active um, member. Uh, <coughs> Tengku was public pro prosecutor at the time, and he was allowed, until of course he resigned, to, to, to become leader of, uh, of UMNO. So too with others like Bahman Shamsuddin and all that, you know, uh, they, were, they, were, they were opening. So, uh, while the left was crippled, there was a promotion of this, this uh, <coughs> right-wing group, the main body being, being UMNO. Now, uh, Isa Aji Muhammad, Bustamam were in detention during the emergency. Dr. Burhanuddin, who was leader of uh, PKMM, after the first one disappeared, Lasso disappeared, uh, <clears throat> he managed to, you know, to, uh, to escape to Singapore. And there he was not detained. But when, uh, after six years or so, people like uh, Pak Sako began to be uh, released, and then later Bustamam released, there were a number of people who, uh, who suggested that there should be a revival of, uh, <coughs> of the API or, or, of the, or of the MNP. They thought there should be a revival. And uh, of course, uh, they approached Bustamam first uh, to, uh, to, uh, to do this. And they agreed that it shouldn't be a new, uh, the old uh, 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 MNP being, being uh, revived. It should be a new party, a new party. And uh, there was, uh, they, they wanted the idea of forming the Pati Rakyat. Pati Rakyat, the People's Party. Now, Pati Rakyat <coughs> was, uh, they, they, they suggested that it should be Ustama as head. But Bustamam said, I'll only be head if uh, Pak Sako and Burhanuddin agreed, or if they declined to be, to be head. Eh? They in fact declined, and they suggested that it should be Bustamam. So Bustamam became the first leader of Pati Rakyat. Now, <coughs> Pati Rakyat was essentially a sort of continuation of the PKMM, and of course, Api in the person of, of uh, Bustamam. It was strongly, uh, strongly uh, influenced by Indonesian politics, especially Sukarno. Bustamam, for instance, even speaks like Sukarno. Yeah? He is an orator of that sort. And uh, Pati Rakyat took the, the ideology of uh, <coughs> the Nationalist Party formed by Sukarno, which was Marhainism, Marhain. Yeah? Marhain, Marhain was the name of a poor peasant whom Sukarno met, very, very poor. He asked him, what's your name, Marhain? Or oh, then I'll call, my struggle is uh, uh, to be known as uh, Marhainism. Marhainism. That's how Marhainism uh, came to be. Yeah? Now, and uh, 
yeah, I, want, I didn't mention just now MNP, PKM, uh, and Satan Melayu Muda, KMM. Uh, they were influenced by Indonesians, not only in terms of what I said just now, but also they were influenced by the nation of intent that they promoted. They intended to form a wider nation beyond just the peninsula, which was called the Melayu Raya, the greater uh, the, uh, Malay world. You know? Now, <coughs> like when they are like uh, KMM also, uh, K, uh, KMM, PKMM was also you know, uh, largely led by middle class. Middle class and uh, <coughs> membership was mainly Malay and rural. This was different from, from the Labour Party. The Labour Party, the, the Patriot was formed on the 11th of November at 11 o'clock in 1955. The Labour Party was formed three years earlier. Three years earlier. And the earlier leaders of the of, uh, of Labour Party, people like Sopi, I don't know whether you know Sopi, yeah? uh, <coughs> and the, uh, uh, Ramanathan, Moksang, well these are not, not very important names like in, in, in left wing history, yeah? but they started the, 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 the Labour Party. And uh, ideologically, and this is quite different. Eh? Ideologically, they were influenced very much by the Fabian Society of England. Now, the Fabians, as you know, were a kind of socialists, you know, uh, who believed in a uh, reformist form of uh, socialism. And uh, they were, in fact, some of them professionals, or some of them uh, I mean the leaders of Labour Party, some of them professionals and some of them leaders of union like Mok Sang, you know, and uh, they formed the Labour Party. So the Labour Party at the beginning was very much, very much influenced uh, <coughs> by that kind of uh, ideological outlook. And uh, you have a situation of course, most of the following of Labour Party, it, unlike Parti Rakyat which was Malay and <coughs> rural, the members of Labour Party, even from the beginning, were Chinese and Indians, especially at the leadership level, and uh, urban. Now, uh, when, when, uh, <coughs> when uh, Ahmad Bustamam took over the leadership of Parti Rakyat, there was a kind of understanding between Ahmad Bustamam and the Bani <coughs> and uh, Pasako and Burhanuddin that they should try to capture the leadership of the three existing parties then. Parti Rakyat, which was already under Bustamam, Labour Party, Labour Party. Later, of course, Pasako managed to become leader of Labour Party. And then PAS, Burhanuddin became leader of PAS. And they mooted the idea of uniting or uh, uh, merging these three organizations in order to fight the alliance then, the AMNU alliance, uh, AMNU, AMNU MCA and MIC. Now the idea of <coughs> parties cooperating goes back also to the pre pre uh, pre war, you have the Putra AMCJA. Now Putra was made up of mainly <coughs> Malay organisations led by uh, PKMM, MNP just now, API and Put, uh, and, uh, and a few others, Awas and also the Barisan Tani, you know, and uh, <coughs> the AMCJA, the All Malay. Uh, John, uh, Council of Joint Action, you know, you had uh, <coughs> uh, the more, uh, well, you had from Singapore, the Democratic Union played an important role, and there were several other unions, uh, no, 
Malayan MDU, Malayan MDU in Singapore, and there were several trade unions and non-Malay associations who were in in in, in uh, MCJA, and the AMCJA of course merged. They became a very strong force, powerful force that had great influence. Uh, <coughs> they had rallies which were very big, and apparently attended mainly by Malays. You know, and that was in fact the beginning of uh, of uh, uh, <coughs> the feeling of unity for to fight for independence. And the, the British saw the danger in this, and they. They they uh, destroyed the, that <coughs> that coalition, and so these three people, after the war, tried to revive the idea of the coalition, because the idea is a strong idea, a powerful idea for the unity of the people in order to fight colonial, uh, colonialism. Now, uh, but this idea failed. Because past Burhanuddin could not carry past into this uh, coalition. So finally, we had only the Labour Party and the Parti Rayat. The Labour Party and Parti Rayat <coughs> merged as Socialist Front. So you have a situation here where you have a predominantly Malay and rural, rural party. Pati Rayat and the urban lay and the urban Chinese based not only in the towns but also in the in the resettled areas the resettled resettlement areas you know, those uh, who were resettled from <coughs> from uh, the squatter areas uh, on the edges of the or the of jungles so usually you know, where they planted all kinds of things vegetables especially and uh, uh, this combination was a powerful combination because it represented strong unity that was multi-ethnic and that existed not only at the leadership level but also <coughs> at, the, at, the, at the grassroots level. And this happened, uh, uh, they, they, they uh, formed the SF during Merdeka Day and it was formalized and registered a year afterwards in 1958. So in other words, it predated the alliance. <coughs> the alliance was, was formed, upon, you know, no, it didn't predate, it actually upon, uh, uh, you, have, you have the alliance formed in 19... Uh, uh, 54, I think, 50, and, and 1954 before Merdeka. Eh? So, but that was of a different nature. It's a quite a loose kind of combination of AMNU, uh, MCA, and MIC. Yeah? Now, uh, <clears throat> during the election in 1955, before independence, there were only two two parties which have any which. Uh, were the main contestants, Amnu and uh, and uh, Pass. Eh? So uh, they they uh, elected something like 54, 55 seats eh, out of uh, I can't remember how many, 90 or something like that. Anybody remembers? You don't remember. <laughs> Any, uh, now, uh, <coughs> but Pass won only one. Pass won only one. Eh? Now, after. After the election, of course, they had the member system that was formed, a kind of a cabinet, a combination of uh, the British government servants and all that, with the High Commission, and uh, some AMNU, M MCA and MIC, uh, so-called members, cabinet members. They were called just members, not ministers, you know. So you had uh, Tunku Abdraman, you had uh, <coughs> Tun Ismail, you had uh, any uh, money, uh, uh, Tan Susin, I think, Tan Susin. And then who was the Indian there? Turesingam. Turesingam was the, was the MIC, the Indian. So you had the 
the tokens of all the various ethnic groups, you know, in that member system. After election '59, of course, you had when you had uh, <coughs> uh, the the election participated. By then, the alliance which was formed, led by Amnu, and the Socialist Front, Socialist Front, 1959, and the Socialist Front and PAS, of course. The Socialist Front did uh, quite well. You know, they got eight seats, and uh, they got about 15 percent of uh, of the popular votes. So quite many. Uh, they were just slightly behind PAS. You know. And of course, Amnu uh, was the majority. Now, <coughs> the influence of any uh, of uh, Socialist Front, especially the Labour Party, which was much stronger than Parti Rakyat, you know, was not so much in uh, the number of seats that they won for Parliament, but the number of local councils, local governments that they controlled. They controlled almost all. The local councils in in the country, and that was the reason why uh, the government formed a committee under Ati Nahapan, Ati Nahapan, Ati Nahapan, to study the local councils. They expected Ati Nahapan to to uh, to uh, recommend that, uh, that to recommend. Uh, the abolition of election for local council. Now, he did the, re the reverse. He said the election of local council should continue, should continue. But for for alliance, this was da dangerous because Kuala Lumpur itself was controlled in the sense that uh, there were three or four parliamentary seats from Kuala Lumpur then, and all were from Socialist Front. So it, it was it was dangerous for 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 Amnu, you know, to have Kuala Lumpur, the capital, being controlled by Socialist Front, and the various uh, various uh, uh, local council. So they decided to put aside Atin Hapan's report and said abolish election for local council, and this has remained until today. Now, meanwhile, of course. Uh, you had <coughs> you had a uh, uh, confrontasi around 1960 confrontasi and uh, during confrontasi there were allegations that leaders of the of uh, socialist front <coughs> were conspiring to form a government in exile and they said this was Mooted in in Cairo. Uh, at that time, but by that time, Aziz Ishaq, he was a minister then. He was a minister for any for fisheries and cooperative, for uh, agriculture and cooperative. But they don't call it agriculture and cooperative then. It was only uh, uh, agriculture and fishery, fishery, yeah. Uh, he had differences with Tengku. Now the differences was very much uh, on the basis of uh, it was ideological in a sense. Uh, Aziz Isha was quite quite socialistic in uh, in in in, in, uh, in orientation. <coughs> he believed in the cooperative and he encouraged cooperatives. And uh, of course, this was not to the liking of uh, of. Uh, Tunku, the crunch came when they wanted to to establish a urea factory, urea for agricultural fertilizer. You know? <coughs> Tunku wanted to give it to to a British company. He wanted to have it as a cooperative. And being minister of cooperative in cooperative and and fishery, uh, co uh, agriculture and co and fishery, he had a bigger say in this. Yeah? So when he uh, defied Tunku. <clears throat> he was removed from his ministry to the Ministry of Health. He refused to be removed, so he was sacked. He was sacked. No, was he sacked or? Uh, so he he left. He left when he, the cabinet. He left the cabinet and uh, he uh, later formed the the National Convention Party, 
the NCP Parti Perhimpunan Kebangsaan eh? well <coughs> I was quite a uh, I played quite a big role in helping him actually uh, for forming that party then uh, helping to uh, <coughs> write the constitution with uh, the parliamentarian who had left the, uh, the Amnu also he was Dari Ali eh? Dari Ali who was uh, uh, at one time secretary of the uh, of uh, MNP Parti Pansaan and uh, <coughs> later he became, he became parliamentarian in, uh, as Amnu member and uh, he left and we both worked on the constitution and I wrote the speech for Aziz Ha for his, uh, for his uh, uh, inaugural address eh? for the formation of the, party, of the party and we managed to uh, to persuade him to join to join uh, uh, the socialist front well he he at first wanted to join party rakyat he wanted to join party rakyat but we advised him it's better for him to to form a new party to draw amnu members to the party because if he joined party rakyat you know amnu was against party rakyat because of its ideology now he did not succeed very much then now when he when he was <coughs> implicated with this uh, plan or conspiracy so called of forming uh, an exile a government in exile when they came back they were all arrested upon uh, he and uh, pustamam and pak sako and all the rest of them because <coughs> they happened to be in in cairo then you know, they might have talked about it but as far as I know, there was no decision at all about, about, <coughs> about forming an exile government. But they attended a, a, a meeting of the Afro-Asian Afro Afro Solidarity Organization, of which I'm still you know, involved until now. You know? But that, at that time, uh, <coughs> the, the allegation was that the Afro-Asian uh, People's Organization was... Uh, you know, subverted by communists, by Russians, and by Chinese, and all the rest of it. You know, and of course, anybody who anybody who attended that would be considered as a as a dangerous. And for your information, of course, uh, Mahathir, when he was <coughs> when he was uh, after he was uh, sacked from Amnu, he went to uh, to a Afro Asian conference together with Samad Ismail. And uh, Tengku promised that when they return, they would be arrested. So they were waiting in Rome for nearly a month, you know, both of them, until they were told that, well, the, road, the, the, <laughs> the way is clear, and then only <laughs> they came back. Now, uh, <clears throat> now, I'm a little bit lost now. When I talk about Mahathir, sure I get lost. <laughs> <laughs> Because I want to go more against it, you know, <laughs> than need be. Now, <coughs> after 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 that, the the, the confrontation, yeah, and then uh, involvement of some Malays, Malaysians in uh, the Indonesian army against. Uh, <coughs> The government, and also uh, the action taken by a uh, by uh, legal action taken by PAS, PAS uh, uh, against the government for forming Malaysia, and the threat, of course, of any uh, of uh, of secession and all that. So that made the situation bad, and as a result, not only because of the exile, uh, government exile, but also by all these other developments, you have action taken <coughs> to arrest a big number of uh, of party riot and uh, labor party socialist front uh, cadres and they were the best cadres yeah, who were arrested <coughs> not only at the top rung uh, top level but also the middle rung now uh, <coughs> when these arrests occurred you know there were two uh, two uh, things that happened one of course because those arrested were the best people no? who could really keep the social front very strong together, you remove them and what was left actually were people who were not so ideological. 
and they were men the the special branch managed to to undermine them to 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 subvert them in a sense and they began to take very extreme action waving the red flag you know to show that they are more progressive than others in order to to draw in the real progressive people who are have not been detained you know so uh, when this happened the good ones were again arrested those who waved the red flag you know as as being very revolutionary nothing happened to them and at the same time also there was also uh, the effect of any of uh, <coughs> of uh, of uh, the cultural revolution the cultural revolution uh, it affected labor party more than the party rakyat in party rakyat there were some chinese branches they were also affected but in terms of size and number they were nothing compared to the to the labor party so at one stage at one stage the labor party took very up and very radical and extreme line you know which of course made it easy for for the government to further take strong action against uh, against the <coughs> these people and of course you have the as i i i say and all that to uh, to help them do that now <coughs> the other thing of, of course when this happened it it apparently it uh, it uh, uh divided more clearly you know the differences between abir ayat and and uh, uh labor party at the same time you had a controversy over language and culture bustamam was in detention lim kiansiu was in uh, was outside now lim kiansiu was uh, <coughs> secretary of uh, labor party as well as secretary of for the socialist front Qua- uh, it started when when uh, <coughs> lim kiansiu uh, promoted that there should be a, a multilingual policy and uh, to be adopted you know now uh, mustamam in detention replied replied to say that you know we have already agreed that it should be uh, malay as the main uh, main uh, as the lingua franca and the main medium of instruction and that uh, according to constitution other languages can be learned you know and they kept on exchanging upon this uh, this uh, <coughs> controversy controversial statements you know and of course the newspapers as usual took advantage of that they really big give up any big give up any big big uh, coverage to it giving the angle that you have now the split between the malays and the chinese among the left you know strengthened by the fact that the chinese are some of them are very radical influenced by china and you have upon the uh, pati rakyat people who are influenced by indonesia so you you have this kind of situation and it helped not only the government to take action effective action but also it helped to split and weaken the socialist front and in fact when the uh, <coughs> when government uh, took strong action against the uh, labor party the labor party decided that you see the government did not did not ban it they had already taken all the leaders and they wanted the the party to 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 serve as a kind of a of a punching bag like right? so they decided that labor party should close its shutters its close its shutters that's the term used you know but labor party to close its shutters and uh, that was the big, and and of course this was followed by <coughs> uh, a formal meeting of party rakyat which decided that uh, that uh, they should that that the sf was over and they should, they should go on their own <coughs> there was in fact a division there were people like tanji kun who was in the labor party there was somebody uh, uh, and uh, <coughs> rajukuma dr rajukuma you know, who was uh, branded by the by, by the government as the theoretician of uh, <coughs> the labor party at the social front and uh, there was of course uh, 
Tan Chee Koon uh, there's V. David well although Raja Kumar was never attacked by the extreme left, left wing group you know people like Tan Chee Koon and V. David were really strongly criticized in fact there was even a, a sort of uh, People's court <laughs> that was formed to open it to by by the by the slave party faction no, to to open it to uh, to call them to brand them as anti people and all that. <clears throat> now why why I'm saying this is that when uh, uh, the split within the SF the split within within uh, uh, Labour Party and later later the split within Party Rakyat. In Pati Rakyat, after Mustafam was detained, <coughs> Kasim came back from London and he immediately changed the party uh, to Pati Socialist Rakyat, Pati Socialist Rakyat with the ideology uh, scientific socialism uh, which I thought was not timely yet for the party to, to adopt and uh, this of course made it easier for government to, to brand the party as pro-communist or communist because they say well scientific socialism what is it it's Marxism and Marxism is uh, communism and they go to the kampong they go to the kampong and uh, tell the people now look these are communist parties you know and uh, it so happened it so happened that uh, Akasim who is a good poet you know wrote a poem, a poem uh, <coughs> which ended which ended with a line you know uh, Tuhan sudah mati. Eh? Tuhan sudah mati. No, he is talking about when he, but people who are dancing in a uh, who are drunk, dancing under under the tower of the masjid, you know, of the mosque. And in that situation, he said Tuhan sudah mati. And of course, Utusan Melayu and Mahathir at that time took just that line to tell the whole uh, Malay population through Utusan Melayu that Patir Ayat is. A communist party which is any uh, uh, doesn't believe in God and all that you know so that affected that we can you can the party and also created split with the party in fact uh, there were two, two groups like he with that group and I uh, the other group you know who was not in favor of that vast change all this I think I've explained in my book <coughs> my book uh, the memoir you know and uh, this helped lah. This helped to weaken you know, the break of the uh, Labour uh, Front, the split of Labour Party, and even the split of the of uh, Parti Rakyat uh, <coughs> to weaken the left wing movement, especially among the Malays. Now, as I said just now. I disagreed, and in fact, I I left. Uh, I didn't leave the party. I left my position at that time as deputy president, and I went for my PhD, and uh, I continued to, uh, to, uh, to of course become to be a member of the party. I didn't leave the party. I never criticized the party openly until recently, of course, in the book, uh, and uh, while the day, but the the. Labour Party had closed its shutters. Party Rakyat continued. Party Rakyat continued. But in 1990, when I took took the leadership of the party, because Kasim had left the party, of all things, to join Amnu. But he was, he was Amnu in Amnu just for short months, you know, because he couldn't couldn't get along with with uh, the branch that he was uh, he was uh, information. Uh, secretary of yeah, and uh, we we of course uh, continued as president, and uh, you know I <coughs> uh, moved that there should be a penny, there should be a change, a return to the name of the old party instead of socialist party, call it just Parti Rakyat as as before. And we dropped scientific socialism that because and 
<coughs> had a broad program, a pro people's program. Didn't even call it socialist, you know, just a broad, peop a broad people's program. And uh, because of this, because of this, there were some, of course, unhappy elements within the party which said, "Well, Parti Rakyat has given up socialism under Syed Hussein, so we should leave." <laughs> and uh, among those who left was Dr. Nasir, lah. Dr. Nasir and he later formed formed the, the Party Socialist, you know. Now, uh, <clears throat> during that time, uh, by 1997, you had the Anwar, you know, issue coming cropping up. 1998, eh? Anwar. from prison, Anwar Rabani, Anwar <coughs> wrote to me, you know. And by the way, Anwar was quite close to me even then, you know, even when he was in government. We were still uh, quite close. He was my student. He, were, he was my uh, my, my uh, any, uh, detention mate, you know, for, for a while. No? So he wrote and said, "Now look, uh, why don't you uh, why don't we work together?" Kadilan National at that time, and Pati Rakyat. And uh, when uh, uh, there was the coalition that was formed under Tengku Razali before this, you know, in 1990. In 1990, called Gagasan. Tengku Razali had several times asked me and other party members, party leaders, you know, to jo to open it, to merge with uh, with uh, uh, party party uh, uh, party what? Semangat 46, Semangat 46, which he led. Eh? And we refused to for three reasons. One. We noticed that Abani, that Tengku uh, <coughs> Razali and his followers were never willing to fight with, on issues of freedom, especially freedom of speech. We arrange a, a charama, and the police come to stop them. They won't challenge. They just close shop. That's all. Eh? So we said, "Ini tak boleh jadi lah." Karena secondly, <coughs> Abani. Uh, Strong elements of, of uh, feudalism among them. You have, uh, the, well, everybody referring to Tengku Razali, you know, as Pate, Pate, you know, <laughs> Pate, Pate, Pate yang, yang Mulia, Yang Mulia Tengku Razali, you know, and I can't be Pate, Pate King with him, you know, during, and so too with our members, you know, because uh, in actual word, in actual meaning, uh, Pate is Pate is a dog. When you say to Sultan, you know, Pate, you're just saying, I am, you know, I'm a dog. And this is what feudalism, you know, mentality is all about. You know? So one day I really said so in a meeting. You know? I said, Do you all know what Pate means? I said, <laughs> then they were shocked, of course. But I think it was really took it just uh, coolly, you know. Being coolly, he was cool. <laughs> you know, his, his short name is Sepanish. Uh, nickname is Kuli, you know. Now uh, he was quite cool about it, but uh, at that time Marina, you know, Marina Marina Yusuf, not Marina Mahdir, Marina Yusuf. Marina Yusuf uh, was vice president of the party. He said, Said Hussein, you may you may be gentle and uh, slow, uh, soft spoke speak spoken, you know, but you are really really <laughs> rough when it comes to this, you know. I said, I'm just telling the truth. Now, thirdly, of course, you know. We had a feeling that they were going back to UMNO. So we decided not to cooperate. But on the other hand, you know, and, and they didn't, did not have much of any much uh, uh, ground support. On the other hand, when, when Anwar was detained, you know, <coughs> we could see the fighting spirit of the young people. They, they really challenged the government. You know? Number two, they, Ebony, they, uh, in spite of all that was said about Anwar and the others, we were certain they would never go back to Amnu. And I was certain, no? knowing, uh, knowing Anwar. So, uh, and of course, there was, there was a broad support from the people. And we thought that this is a good idea for us to work with them and probably uh, and, uh, influence the broad masses who are supporting them which we never could, could, I mean, could uh, make contact with in a very, uh, very effective way. 
So it didn't take one meeting. It took three congresses before we decided that we would only do much. And of course, uh, some Amnu fellows uh, have accused that I received 500,000, a mere 500,000, to, 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 uh, to uh, influence the party to merge with the money with. Uh, and this is not true, of course. Uh, the fact is that it was a decision by the Congress, more than two thirds, in fact, 80% deciding that we should work with, uh, they should, we, should, uh, we should cooperate. Yeah? And uh, that was that. So now, I am Kadilan. I was president, uh, deputy president for a while. And now <coughs> I have uh, given up that post. No? And uh, if you can see, I mean, uh, Kadilan, not only he does it take, take, I mean, does it take a very strong oppositional line against government, no compromise on human rights or the rights of economic rights of, uh, of people or the poor, eh? but also uh, in general, <coughs> you can say that it's very pro people. Very pro, pro people. So when you, when they talk about the four, four principles that we uh, we adopt, uh, one, keadilan untuk semua, justice for all, irrespective of ethnic group, you know? and then keprihatinan or kepedulian rakyat. You must be concerned about the people, the poor people. So not only are you fair to all but you are more, more concerned about the people. So when you talk about, about any, uh, eradicating poverty or improvement of the, of the poor, it means cutting across ethnic lines. And uh, although we, we are ag accused of being very pro-Chinese and all that, we say, now look, if you look at the poor, more than 70% of them are Malays. So when you improve the poor, the majority who will get it will be the Malays. Not, of course, some non-Malays will get it. But now, the policy now is to say, for Malays, Ketuanan Melayu and all that. So I mean, uh, uh, Malays are the master of this, of, this, uh, of this land, you know. But who gets all the, all the wealth? It's just a few people. And denying, of course, the Chinese uh, poor. Giving little help to the Malay poor. Third principle is, is uh, <coughs> national integration, national unity, based on, on uh, concern for the poor, concern, uh, concern for the uh, rakyat, and uh, justice for all just now. That would be a good basis for, for national integration. And fourth, of course, the fourth one is, of course, fighting the evil of uh, corruption and, uh, uh, and all that, you know. So these are the four things. The four things, and and uh, they are not socialists, you know. They are, you know, you can't say these are. Uh, you you can't call the party socialist. It's not. It is not a socialist party, Kadilan, you know. But uh, some of us from the party Rakyat before will try to make sure that that Kadilan will remain pro people, will remain multi ethnic in outlook in its outlook. And I think this is a good achievement for this, for the, for, uh, at this juncture. Because you, uh, I always believe, you know, maybe uh, Sukai may not agree. I believe that, uh, I think he agrees, he agrees. <laughs> he, he normally agrees with, with me and I with him, you know. Uh, I think uh, it's too early to talk in terms of the socialist agenda in this country. And especially when you talk about the social agenda, you have a small following of Indians or a small following of Chinese. It's not a, a mass kind of a situation. So you have to talk in terms of wider things, the pro-people, democracy and all that, you know. Now, once people have opened up their mind to democracy, to the idea that you should struggle for the common masses, you know, then I think it's easier at a at, at later stage to talk in terms of uh, socialism. And of course, socialism has got so many meanings. So many meanings. So we talk about 
Fabian socialism just now. And people, are, there are other people who talk about Islamic socialism and all that. And we have to formulate what we have for the, what we need for this country. It's not terms or brands that we need. It is better livelihood for the people, freedom from from uh, from exploitation, economic elevation, freedom from from uh, from uh, laws that are vindictive, you know? draconian. So these these are some of the things that need to be very to, to be promoted. Now I believe uh, strongly in that, and uh, I think. Uh, People are beginning to to uh, <coughs> to appreciate these ideas. Otherwise, they won't be supporting so much for Kadila now. Now, I think I've spoken too much. I promised to speak for half an hour. I think I've spoken more than half an hour. Please be free to ask me anything. If I can answer, I can answer. If I can't, I'll ask. Uh, well, I've got a number of friends here who can answer, who are more competent than me.